When we think of the African diaspora, it's very rare for anyone to think about Mexico. But little do we know that Afro-Mexicans have contributed to the very formation of Mexico itself. Oddly enough, the plight of Afro-Mexicans today simply follow a historical trend implemented by those who highlighted their European ancestry over anything else. Today, I wanted to honor one of the little-known Afro-Mexican revolutionaries who liberated the Mexican people from Spain, Vicente Guerrero. What up African world, it's Home Team here and welcome back to another video of African history, culture, and worldview. By supporting this channel on Patreon, you're helping in the creation of these videos and supporting this content. If you'd like access to courses, sources, or you simply want to show your support, you may do so by clicking the Patreon link in the description box below. To begin, this video may be a little disturbing for some of us in the diaspora, as the history of Vicente can be seen as a little bittersweet. However, his story shouldn't really come as a surprise for us, as Mexico has only recently acknowledged the existence of black people in their country. Anyway, just wanted to mentally prepare those who may be sensitive to this information. Vicente Guerrero was one of the leading revolutionary generals of the Mexican War of Independence and he fought against Spain in the early 19th century. His accomplishments eventually led him to the highest position in the land, becoming the second president of Mexico in 1829. His mother was said to be of African descent and his father was a mestizo. But it would seem as though throughout his life, people highlighted his Africanness above all, reportedly calling him El Negro. He was said to be tall, robust, and of dark complexion. In many ways, Vicente Guerrero was a champion of the people, of the oppressed, and downtrodden. I'd like to think he was this way because he was an Afro-Mestizo man, who no doubt experienced what it was like to be black in Mexico. He came from humble beginnings, starting life as a mule driver. Ironically, his father and his uncle supported Spanish rule of Mexico, but he seemed to have very strong ideas of his own because he was eager to join the Mexican Revolution in 1810. Apparently, Vicente had a very different experience from his father's people, as he was, more often than not, perceived as black, just like his mother. He no doubt saw the mistreatment of his mother throughout Mexican society. Some sources even claim that black women were not even allowed to wear ornaments or jewels. If that's true, then that certainly must have had an impact on young Vicente. The upper class Mexicans, usually of lighter hue or closer to European phenotypes, oppressed the native people and Afro-Mexican populace. But ironically, the Mexican upper class were oppressed and looked down upon by Spain. So there was a very ironic phenomenon in Latin America during that time. But in the end, Africans were always at the bottom. Mexican elites were not permitted to trade with foreign countries and local manufacture was forbidden. So when the revolutionary Hidalfo planted grapevines to make his own wine, government officials tore them up. Wine had to be imported from Spain with a high tax. Also, Mexico was ordered to pay a tribute of around $45 million to Spain. Overall, local Mexican grievances were more than worthy of note, and their maltreatment certainly paved the way for the War of Independence. Declaring Mexican independence, Hidalgo had called upon all his countrymen to follow him. Guerrero distinguished himself so well in the first battle that he was made a captain. In the first stage of the struggle, the Mexicans were successful, but Spain, sending reinforcements from home, soon crushed the rebellion. One by one, leading Mexicans Hidalgo, Allende, Aldama, Jimenez, and Mina were slain or made prisoner. The remainder accepted the king's pardon, all except Vicente Guerrero, who fought on. The government, in an effort to win Vicente, sent his father, Pedro, to offer him lands and wealth. But Vicente scorned the offer. He pledged not to rest until the Spaniards had been driven into the sea. Spain sent one of their best generals against him, but Vicente defeated him in two battles. Interestingly enough, the general sent to defeat Vicente, General Iturbide, wanted to break away from Spain himself and together Vicente and the Spanish general joined together and defeated the Spanish commander Santa Ana. Iturbide became sole ruler of Mexico and showed his true colors as he affirmed the very same things of previous Spanish rulers. After much turbulence and revolt in Mexican society over who the leader was going to be, Mexican officials were finally pressed to allow Vicente to become president. Two masonry sects were vying for power in Mexico, the Scottish Rite and the York Rite. 
The York Rite proclaimed their leader to be Vicente and had this to say about him. The name of the hero of the South is echoed with indescribable enthusiasm everywhere. His valor and constancy combined have engraved themselves upon the hearts of the Mexican people. He is the image of their felicity. They wish to confide to him the delicate and sacred task of the executive power. In 1829, he became the second president of Mexico and went on to champion the cause not only of the racially oppressed, but also of the economically oppressed. In September of that same year, Vicente abolished slavery. This was significant because he did this many years before Abraham Lincoln. As president, Vicente also abolished the death penalty, taxed the rich, protected small businesses, and established the village council movement that enabled peasants to elect representatives without qualifications of race, property ownership, or literacy. Unfortunately, after his brief rule as president, Vicente was betrayed, captured, and assassinated, largely because of the racial undercurrent of Mexico during that time, as many of the more Eurocentric Mexican elites did not want Vicente to potentially rally up Africans or natives in the nation to acquire more positions of power and become the face of the elites. This was largely because Vicente was making Mexican society more equal across the board, and that equality was being spearheaded by him, an Afro-Mestizo, who used to be a mule driver, and not a more racially European Mexican elite. I think Vicente has a great legacy, and I find it very interesting that it was a Mexican with African heritage who not only abolished slavery, but made Mexico a more equal society during his time. Well, I'm all out, guys. If you like these videos and want to help in its continued production, consider supporting the home team on Patreon.com. The link is in the description box below. Know thyself. Remember your ancestors. Peace. <laughs>